Welcome back to English 4.0, the radio show. Let's go! Advanced. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back and welcome to Advanced Class 15. All right, we're going to start by taking a look at a few numbers. That's right. We talked about numbers yesterday, numbers where we say thousand and because we have the, posi- the, the zero after the comma. So if we say one, if we have a number which is one comma zero one two, for example, we would say one thousand and twelve. Normally, we always say hundred and, hundred and, hundred and. But if there's a zero in the hundred position, then of course we can't say hundred at all. So as we skip past that position, we must say and. So we sometimes find ourselves saying thousand and. And we're going to practice with some of those numbers. So get out your pens, get out your paper, and get ready to challenge yourself with some numbers. Okay, so I'm going to read these off. And remember, please put a comma, not a decimal point. This is English here, folks. Not a decimal point. I want a comma separating those numbers. And remember, we don't say thousands, but rather thousand, okay? Or hundred. We don't say hundred. We say Sorry, we don't say hundreds. We say hundred. Okay, first number. One hundred and fifty four thousand and fifty six. Did you get that right? All right, I'm going to go to the next one. We will come back and we will check. Second number six hundred and fifty three thousand and eighty two. And the third number one hundred and one thousand and forty five. Okay, let's go back and check those numbers. What was the first one? Did you get 154,065? Did you get that? Good, good job. Maria, did you get that? Are you sure? Good. Javier? Good. Well done. Pepe? Good. (laughs) Everybody? Good. Well done. So that's one five four comma zero six five. All right, the second number was six out loud and without six hundred and fifty four thousand and eighty two. Very good. Well done. Well done. And the third number that all good. Yeah, one hundred and one thousand and forty five. Excellent. All right, let's try a few more. Three more numbers. Let's go. Three more numbers. 23,091. 345,087. And finally, 43,066. Very good. Okay, the first number. Good. Yes, the first number, 23,091. Well done. And the next number, 345,087. Very good. And the next number was 43,000. At home, out loud, 43,066. So, 43, comma, zero. Six six. Did you get that? All right, just just like the lottery, just like the lottery here, we're gonna have a bonus number. Are you ready for the bonus number? The bonus number is is your do you have your make sure your pencil is sharp to write this down. Don't miss the bonus number. Three hundred and twenty five thousand and thirty eight. Okay. Read that back to me out loud in both alta. Three hundred and twenty five thousand and thirty eight. So, according to the individual digit, 
three, two, five, comma, zero, three, eight. Correct. Give yourself a pat on the back if you got that right. Three hundred and twenty-five thousand and thirty-eight. Good job. All right. All right. I'm going to keep talking here. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep talking about the verb to keep. That's right. So to keep plus gerund is to keep is to continue doing something. No dejar de hacer algo. I hope you'll keep listening to this show until it's over. I hope you'll keep paying attention. Will you keep paying attention until the show is over? Will you keep listening even once the show is over? Will you keep listening to Vaughn Radio to listen to the next show? Will you keep listening? I think it would be a good idea. I think it would be a great idea to keep listening. Yes, I recommend it. Okay. So, keep plus gerund, no dejar de hacer algo, to continue doing something. Now, keep can also be guardar, to hold or retain in one's possession. I keep, I keep too many old things. We call that a pack rat. Uh, I, I'm, I'm what I call a pack rat because I keep too many things. I don't throw away papers enough. I keep everything. I keep a lot of things. Please remember that keep is an irregular verb. Every day I keep. Yesterday I kept. Lately, I have kept. Okay? It's conjugated just like the verb to sleep. Sleep. Yesterday I slept. Lately I have slept. Keep, kept, kept. Sleep, slept, slept. There you go. So to keep doing something, we can also say keep on. We mentioned this a little bit in the last class. To keep on going. I'm going to keep on talking until they tell me to stop. I'm just going to keep on talking. I'm going to keep on talking. I'm going to keep going and going and going. I'm not going to stop until they tell me that the time is up. Okay? We say, okay, keep, we say, keep your eyes. Keep your eyes on the ball when you're playing football. Or we can say, keep your eye. Keep your eye on the ball. Keep watching. And then, keep as in guardar. Where do you keep your keys? Where do you keep your keys? Do you keep them in your pocket? I keep my keys in my pocket all day. Do you keep them in your pocket? Do you keep them in your purse? Hmm. Do you keep a lot of old books? Do you keep too many old things? Today I keep, yesterday I kept. And I kept, you know, when I, when I, when I was young, I kept even more things. I kept everything. I, I, I used to save, I used to collect bottle caps. I used to collect them, the caps from bottles, like Coca-Cola. But I had special ones if there was one from a drink that I had never had before. All soda, of course, not, not, not beer, non-alcoholic. But I used to keep them. I used to collect them. I kept them, and I kept them for years. I think my mother finally threw them out because she said, Kyle, you can't keep, you can't keep keeping all these things. Grammatically, you could say that. You can't keep keeping. You can't continue to save so many things. But I did. I saved so many things. I kept so many things that finally my mother had to throw them out. So, okay, the verb to keep. I'm discussing it in a slightly different way from in your manual. So, um, but hopefully you're following along in the manual and you will keep studying, okay? Keep going. Keep going, okay? Keep studying. Keep practicing. I'm going to keep talking, but I am going to move on to the next topic. In fact, it is time to move on to the... Expression of the day. Yeah, you heard it. It's time to move on to the expression of the day. That's right. The expression of the day today is... Oh, boy. What is it? What is it? I need something to remind me. Please, someone remind me of the expression. Someone just jog, jog my memory, please. Someone Would someone please jog my memory about what the expression of the day is? Just do something to help. Ah, yeah, in, fa- in fact, that's it. To jog one's memory. The expression of the day. There you go. To help someone remember something. To jog your memory. 
So if something reminds you of something, it jogs. J-O-G, to jog. Now, to jog on its own is like to, to, to run on the street, but not at full speed, but you go out, you wear your running shoes, and you run, typically, you know, around the city, around the park. But my, my mind is not necessarily running. That's not the point. But we say to jog your memory. It's like to stimulate your memory, to force you to, or to cause you to remember something. So to jog my memory. So fortunately, someone has jo- I've just jogged my memory, and I've been able to remember the expression of the day, which is to jog one's memory. There you go. To make someone remember. All right. All right, let's sort a few things out here in class 15. 15.2, it's time to sort out a few problems. Arreglar, solucionar, to sort out, to sort them out. Did you sort out the problem? Give, give me an answer. Yes, I sorted out the problem. Did you sort out the situation? Yes, I sorted out the situation. I sorted it out. Sort out. So, arreglar, solucionar. Did you sort it out? Yes, I sorted it out. Ask me if I sorted out my arrangements. Kyle, did you sort out your arrangements? Ask me, ask me. Again, Kyle, did you sort out your arrangements? Yes, I sorted out my arrangements. Ask me if I sorted out all the details. Did you sort out all the details? Ask me again. Kyle, did you sort out all the details? Good, thank you. Now, what do you want to know? Kyle, I want to know if you sorted out all the details. Yes, I did. I sorted out all the details. Will you sort it out on time? At home. Please answer me. Will you sort it out on time? Yes, I'll sort it out on time. Ask me if I think I can sort it out before she arrives. Kyle, do you think you can sort it out before she arrives? Yes, I think I can sort it out before she arrives. Very good. I think I can sort it out before she arrives. Do you think you can sort it all out? Yes, I think I can sort it all out. Will it be sorted out? Yes, It will be sorted out. Did they sort out their misunderstanding? Give me an affirmative answer. Yes, they sorted out their misunderstanding. Good. Now, have I sorted out your confusion about this phrasal verb? Yes, Kyle, you have sorted out my confusion about this phrasal verb. Okay, well, good. Well, good. I'm glad that I've been able to sort that problem out for you so we can move on to the... Vocabulary of the day. Vocabulary of the day. You're right. Yes, it is. It's time for the vocabulary of the day. Our five words of vocabulary. Word word number one. Hacer frente a. To face. To face. Yes. Sometimes you have to face your fears. You have to face your fears in order to overcome them. Terco, testarudo. Stubborn, stubborn, that's right. He's a very stubborn man. Chispa, chispa. I like that word in Spanish, chispa. Spark, spark. With that nice hard K sound, spark, spark. Very good. Torneo, tournament. 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 Very good. Tournament. And then finally, crudo. Crudo. No cocido. Raw. R-A-W, but we don't say raw. We say raw. Raw. I like raw carrots. I do. I enjoy raw carrots. I like eating raw carrots. That's true. And I think they're, they're very healthy for you. Raw carrots. People say eating carrots is good for your vision. That's what I've heard. The beta carotene, I think, or something in the carrot helps 
uh, helps your vision, your eyesight. That's what I've heard. I could be wrong. I'm not a doctor, but that's what they tell me. Okay, folks, it's time to talk about something very important, quantifying time. Now pay attention. Pay attention. Get a little bit closer to the radio here. Pay attention, because this is very important, and I hear a lot of mistakes over the last seven, or sorry, six years of almost six years of teaching English and thousands of hours, I have heard a lot of mistakes with for and since. So for, desde hace, and since, desde. Okay? So whenever we use since, we will be using present perfect. I have been teaching English since 2004. I have been teaching English for... Almost six years. I have been teaching English for almost six years. I have been living in my house for five years. I have been living in my house since 2005. Okay? I have been wearing my watch since nine o'clock. I have been wearing my watch for ten hours. I have been wearing it since 9 o'clock. I have been wearing it for 10 hours. Now, since is followed by a moment. Okay? Since is followed by a moment, and it's used always in the present perfect. For desde hace. We can, we can use any tense with it. I lived in Canada for 25 years. I have lived here for 5 years. Okay? I will be there tomorrow. I will be there for two hours. You can use it with any tense, but for is, fo is followed by a period of time. And for tells us when something happened or when something will happen. Something has happened or is happening or will happen. So for plus a period of time, we're talking about the duration. During, on the other hand, is followed by a noun. Okay, during the summer, I went to Mexico. I was in Mexico for two hours. My plane had to change over, for example. Okay? During the summer, well, uh, that, that, that's not factually true, but I could say during the summer, I was in Toronto. I was in Toronto for three hours. I didn't spend the summer in Toronto. I was in Toronto for three hours waiting for my plane to, to, to change and to take off again. Okay? I've been sitting in this chair for two hours. I've been sitting in this chair for two hours. During the evening I sat... Yet yesterday, during the evening I sat on my sofa. I sat on my sofa for 35 minutes. I didn't spend the whole evening there. I sat there for 35 minutes. Okay? We're completely out of time. And so we're going to practice with this since, for, and since with scenarios in the next class, okay? In the next class, class 16, I will start with a little review, and we'll work on these scenarios. But make sure you understand this and that you're reviewing in your student guide. Okay, I'm completely out of time, but thanks for listening. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>